Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Another week of college football is here. I got to tell you, week five is coming right on up. Week four served us up something special. In which Bish can only pass for 32 yards, but it's okay. It's okay. Iowa didn't pass for very many yards either. In fact, they both combined pass for less than 100 yards. It's okay. Alex Orgy is leading the Michigan offense along with, you know, Mullings and Edwards in the backfield now, you know, being a one-two tandem, Mullings being the one, clearly the number one, and Edwards being the two, even though he should be acting like the one, but it's, it's whatever. They beat USC. They continue to stay relevant and ranked in the top 12, and that's – and that's will shut up the haters like myself for a little while. But Michigan does take on Minnesota this week for the little brown jug. So, you know, yeah, that that's that's certainly something that's going to happen. It's a game that's gonna happen. It's a game that exists. Um for Tennessee, you know, they beat Oklahoma. Honestly, that game, you know, the score is a lot closer. And what happened, and what really happened, Michael Hawkins Jr. stepped in for Jackson Arnold and was able to lead Oklahoma down the field a couple drives the fourth quarter. But again, this game was basically over after like the first half, to be quite honest with you. Um, really the third quarter, too. It was just a rough game all around for the Sooners, and they just, ew, it was rough. It was rough watching that game. I have to tell you that that much, and yet at the end of the day, Oklahoma is going to have to address some things. Yeah, Michael Hawkins is going to be the answer at quarterback for God knows how long, you know, until Oklahoma gets things fine tuning on defense along the O line because, again, they were getting harassed, you know, by Tennessee. You know, it was just a rough time as a Sooners fan. You know, as a Sooners fan, you you want to, you guys may want to, you know, invest in, you know, having an offense that can actually do something because that offense looked anemic. Yeah, you have Brett Venables, that defense is there. And that defense, you know, it felt like at times it was stopping, you know, the hyper offense more than it should have. And that's just the work of that Oklahoma defense. Again, they've done a phenomenal job. On defense, but that offense is putrid. Illinois beat Nebraska. I mean, there was some rep ball in this game that was kind of weird. It was something, but the Illini beat the Cornhusters and knocked them out the top 25. And the Illini now have a top 20 showdown led by Luke Altmeyer. You know, with Penn State this week in Happy Valley, it's going to be intriguing a Saturday night game. It's, Certainly going to be something, I'll tell you that much. Um, you know, Altmeyer, he can definitely sling that rock down the field, but Drew Aller and company, you know, have been on something the past few weeks. They've been on some kind of tear. And honestly, you put up like 700 yards last week, but it was against Kent State, you know, or whoever they play. They played a MAC team last night. I think it was Kent State. And they put up like 700 yards. So Penn State's been quietly flying under the radar for just a little bit, just a couple weeks now, but they're back in the spotlight taking on the Illini. Um, for teams like Utah, Missouri, you know, Utah still has no camp rising, but the defense, again, has been something else this year. Missouri's defense has been also pretty good. They had to go to overtime with Vanderbilt, though. Um Diego Pavia, you know, and the Vanderbilt OC, whoever the, whoever the OC was for Vanderbilt, um, just believe in Diego Pavia. Don't believe in anything else. You should have believed in Diego Pavia, but it's whatever. But Missouri outlasts Vanderbilt, and Utah outlasts Oklahoma State, in which the game they were winning 22-3, but Oklahoma State decided to come back, you know, led by Bowman and crew. No Ollie Gordon, though. He was a non-factor in that game. I don't know why Texas a and is ranked. Again, another MAC team took another team to a limit. And, you know, Bowling Green took Texas a and to the limit. Why it was 26 to 20, I have no idea. But AM barely really shouldn't even be ranked at all. It should be a team like UNLV that should be here. But it's whatever. 
you, you know, at least we got Boise State, right? That's I guess that's fine, right? That's fine. We're gonna be playing a pretty good Washington State team this week, you know, led by Mateer. Oh boy, that's gonna be that's gonna be this is gonna be a fun game. It's gonna be a fun game. Um, I think that's next week. No, that's next week. Uh, I think I'm tripping. Hold up, let me let me check let me check the schedule real quick because I'm I'm tripping. I think the Washington State Boise State game is this week. If I'm not mistaken, let me check. Let me just check really really quickly, really quickly here because I don't remember at all. But yeah, it's this week. I'm, I'm tripping. So, yeah, the number 25 Boise State Broncos will be playing Washington State and John Petir and that really good Wazoo offense. It's a really good offense. Um, expect that to be a high scoring. It's a late night game, of course, along with Oregon, UCLA, Arizona, Utah. And, and there's a couple other games that are late. Um, definitely watch out for potential. Um, former Pac-12 at the dark shenanigans. I know this is technically Big 12 and Big 10 at the dark shenanigans now, but expect some crazy things late at night. Kansas State, you know, speaking of late at night, Kansas State got absolutely destroyed by BYU. We're talking, we're talking, you know, block kicks, interceptions, fumbles, offensive errors. It was just a rough time for the for the Wildcats. Now this week, them and Oklahoma State will tangle. And the big question, you know, coming into this week, because Colorado is playing UCF this week, and UCF is unbeaten. Colorado had to barely survive a Baylor team with a Hail Mary, of course, thrown by Shadur Sanders late in that game. And the Big 12 race is going to be something. It's going to be something to watch as we continue to really kind of unfold before, you know, some of these bigger matchups involving the SEC teams. And yeah, there is one that we need to talk about, but not yet. And the Big 12 is continuing to unravel and unfold in a way that is looking very, very much chaotic. So I'm intrigued to see what happens there. And speaking of that top four matchup, it will be Georgia, led by Carson Beck, and a, and a heavy dose of, of talent taking on Jalen Milrow in the Alabama Crimson Tide, number two versus number four. Let me tell you, whoever wins this game will be number one ranked next this upcoming Sunday. They will be ranked when the AP poll comes out at 1 p.m. Eastern or Central Time, excuse me, Central Time on Sunday. When the AP poll comes out, whoever wins this game will be ranked number one for the time being. Um, I know Texas is playing their first conference game this week, but, you know, it's Mississippi State. They've lost Blake Shapin for the year. Arch Manning, I believe he should be starting still. Don't quote me on that because uh, I haven't really checked, you know, who's going where this week. Um, and, again, this Georgia-Alabama game is big. I mean, this is – the implications of this are massive. Again, Two losses may not kill you as far as the college football playoff race is concerned, but at the same time, one loss right now, and you're looking, with the way these conferences have gotten real big, you're looking like if one loss does you in, oh boy, that's going to be rough, buddy. You won't be able to get the SEC championship that way. Considering the Ole Miss is still lurking, Missouri is still lurking, Tennessee lurking. This matchup is huge, huge, huge game. And Jalen Milrow has been playing like a Heisman Trophy candidate, to be quite honest with you. I know Cam Ward has been playing lights out as well, along with Ashton Janty and a couple others. But Milrow, you know, when he was able to against USF, you know, he lit them up. Wisconsin lit them up. Everybody else, he's just lit them up so far. And he might continue to do that against this Georgia team. Georgia showed cracks in their armor, you know, against Kentucky. But Alabama also showed cracks in their armor against USF, letting um, USF's quarterback run all over them, you know, and do stuff like that. So this game right here, going to be big. Not just for anything else. Um, 
So, yeah. There's one more game I do want to talk about real quick, and that is Louisville, Notre Dame. Notre Dame trying to regain their national relevance. You know, after losing a game to a Mac school earlier in the season, you know, it was a rough, rough time of it. But ultimately, at the end of the day, Notre Dame lost that game. And you know, now Northern Illinois ain't ranked no more. So there's that. You know, they lost. But now you've got a Louisville team that is 1-0 in conference play. They just beat Georgia Tech, a really intriguing Georgia Tech team led by Tyler Shuh, of all guys. You know, that guy, yeah. Um, and he's got a really, really intriguing, you know, backfield, you know, to really, you know, kind of mess, kind of bounce things off of. Because this Louisville team, you know, again, it's been tested by Georgia Tech and – Excuse the background noise there. And, you know, this this Louisville team, you know, needs another test, and this is a great test for them. So what this game means is that, you know, Louisville trying to not only, you know, gain some respect in the ACC, but gain respect nationally. They're ranked right number 15 in the nation, and this win could propel them and pretty much block Notre Dame from going to the CFP because, again, the schedule for Notre Dame is looking a little bit weaker than it has in years past, and that's just the nature of the beast. And Louisville, you know, would have to take advantage of a weaker ACC. Again, I don't buy Clemson. Yeah, yeah, Clemson beat the Burks off at of NC State. I get that. I get it. But still, still, I just don't buy Clemson. Miami. Um, there were some kinks in the armor again. USF was showing, you know, kinks in that armor that Miami had yet again. Not Cam Ward, though, but that defense. Um, so, so Louisville trying to maybe, you know, creep up in the top 12. You know, it, it's possible that they can with, with a win against Notre Dame. Last but not least, let's talk the Pac-12 because the situation has gotten weird. It continues to evolve day after day after day. The, the Pac-6 of Oregon State, Washington State, Boise State, Fresno State, Colorado State, and San Diego State you know, added Utah State. They're trying to add UNLV. They said, hey, we're trying to get Memphis and USF and Tulane and UTSA, but the America was like, no, no, no. We're not doing that. And now, you know, Texas State is being, you know, brought up as a name. Gonzaga was even, you know, like, oh, well, Gonzaga's in the new Pac-12, baby. And then, like, 15 minutes later, nope. So I don't know what in the world's going on at this point. The Pac-12 needs to get to at least eight full members to be a NCAA classified conference by next year. And the Mountain West will have to do the same thing at this point because they are down to seven. It's a seven and seven split. Again, my thoughts on this are pretty simple. Why didn't these conferences just merge? The Pac-2 should have merged with the Mountain West. It's just, it's plain and simple. You know, the CW, you know, yeah, they had the TV deal for the one year and everything like that. Yeah, CW is looking for more inventory, which we talked about on Monday with volleyball. But at the same time, you know, at the same time, there has to be some sort of sense here. Because all of your plans are going out the windows. You know, your plan A. Didn't work. Plan B didn't work. Plan C didn't work. What's plan D going to be, Pac-12? What's plan D going to be for a lateral move? This is a lateral move. Remember, top five conference champions make it to the college football playoff. It doesn't have to be, you know, the Big Ten, the SEC, the Big 12, the ACC, and one group of five, group of 16. Oh, no. It, like, an SEC team will probably make it every year, a Big Ten team will probably make it every year because that's how strong those two conferences are. But the ACC, the Big 12, that is not as guaranteed at this point. That is not as guaranteed 
for those two to make the playoff, you know, as a top four champion to get that bye into one of those bowl games, you know, near New Year's Day and stuff like that. It is not guaranteed. So what the Pac-12 is trying to do is a lateral move that makes no sense. There's no TV money involved here because who are you going to get at this point? Uh, the CW? Uh, I don't know. But yeah, who are you going to get? Sorry about the noise again in the background. There's some background noise involving some neighbors of mine, so it's fine. It's fine. But yeah, who are you going to get at this point? Who are you going to get? What, what are you going to... Okay, let me just, let me just say at, at the end of the day, what is Patch Club going to get? That's all I got to say. It's getting dark outside and things are escalating over here. So just... Uh, I'm going to just get on up out of here because I don't really have much else to say because I don't want to get on too much of a rant and stuff like that, too. So, And I got to go to the bathroom. So, yeah. Y'all y'all take care. Have a good win- Have a good Tuesday. Have a good Wednesday. I'll be back tomorrow to talk, you know, some NFL stuff because, oh, my God, we had another crazy week of NFL action. I'm going to just, just, just smile and wave. I'm just smiling and waving. <laughs>